this is the first example from chapter 2.2. And this new concept we're going to talk about is called verifying trigonometric identities. What that really means is that you're going to be given an equation. Last time that we did, uh, or in chapter 2.1, we were just given a trig expression, and you had to simplify it a little bit. This is different. This is an actual equation. So you have a left side and a right side. And when you see verify, what that means is your job is to prove using your trigonometric identities uh, as well as some other methods, your job is to prove that the left side equals the right side. Uh, now I took this out of the book and here's some of the thoughts that, that I got, some of the hints. One, you want to get one side to look like the other. Now for the most part, you want to start with the more complicated side and we're going to for the most part make the left side more complicated. So you want to take the more complicated side over here, which is secant squared x minus 1 over secant squared x. And we're going to try to manipulate it so that it eventually will end up looking like sine squared x. And we're not going to do anything to the right side. Uh, the next hand down here is when you're working these, we want to look for opportunities to factor. Maybe we need to add fractions. Maybe we have like two binomials we need to foil. Uh, we might need to use the conjugate sometimes. We might need to split a fraction at sometimes. We might need to add fractions sometimes which means you'll have two fractions and you've got to get the same denominator. Uh, on this one, what we have is we have a fraction on the left side and we have equal sine squared x. So I'm going to work down the left side each time, drawing an arrow, and when you're verifying, you're going to have to be able to justify each step along the way. Why we're able to turn this into this. Uh, so the first thing is we've got secant squared x minus 1 over secant squared x. And your first thought is, hey, that top right there, that looks like one of those Pythagorean identities. So what I'm going to do is I make a side note, and I'm going to just use this red marker every time I'm using one of the identities. There's an identity in the middle of the page that says this. 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. Now that's not the same as what I see right here, the secant squared x minus 1. But I can take 1 plus tangent squared x and I can manipulate it around, so if I minus 1 on each side, I would get tangent squared x equals secant squared x minus 1. So when I do that, what it allows me to do is, anytime I have a secant squared x minus 1, I can replace it with a tangent squared x. And that'll make, um, you know, that'll make this left side look a little bit simpler right off the bat. So my first thing is, I'm going to put an arrow down here, and the first thing I did is I changed this into tangent squared x. The, num uh, the denominator is still secant squared x, and it still equals sine squared x. So every step that I do, I'm going to say equals sine squared x. Later down the line, as the examples take longer and longer and longer, I might just say equals and put a blank over there, assuming it's always going to be the same. This is sine squared x, so it will be sine squared x. The goal is to try to make it look, try to make this side look like sine squared x. Alright, so the next thing I see is, okay, I have tangent squared x, and I have on the bottom I have a secant squared x. Neither of these are sine or cosine. Uh, so one of the things says if you're, if you're ever stuck, try turning everything into sine or cosine. So the way I'm going to do this is, I am going to take the tangent squared x off this fraction, and you're allowed to take out of the numerator, and I'm going to put it over here to the left. So the thing in the numerator is just one piece can come over here to the left. So now I have tangent squared x. And then when you pull the thing off, if there's nothing else up there, it just becomes 1 over secant squared x equals sine squared x. So all I did is I took tangent squared off the top and I slid it over to the left. And then I had to have a, a 1 up there. If I wanted to, I could remultiply it back into the top. All right, now at this point, I can do this. If you're stuck, turn everything into sines and cosines. So when I take tangent, I should know that tangent is sine over cosine. So tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. So my next thing, I'm going to change this into sine squared x over cosine squared x. And then 1 over secant squared x, well, I'm allowed that 1 over secant squared x using my identities. This one clearly turns into cosine squared x. And then I still have equal sine squared x. So I've gone, this is one step, 
then the second step, then the third step. And now my fourth step is, okay, when I see cosine squared x over here, this is like a numerator cosine squared x and a denominator cosine squared x. Even though this isn't in a fraction, if it's on just, if it's on the top of a fraction or if it's just on level ground, it's like a numerator and it'll cross out a denominator. As long as there's no plus here, there's a plus sign right here, we got a different problem. Remember, there's no sign there, it's an assumed to multiply, and that works out good for us to cross this out right there. And the only thing left is sine squared x. So we've done it. We've got sine squared x on the left side equals sine squared x on the right side. And that's the end of it. You verified it. So there it is. Done.